So in this video I want to consider the following definite integral, the integral from 0 to L of sine squared n pi x over L with respect to x, and we are told that n is an integer. So if we are going to calculate this integral, it's a definite integral, we should expect the result to be positive because we are integrating something which is positive uh, for all values of x because it is a square. So we see here the integral of sine squared and that should make us think about using a double angle formula. So let's recall the double angle formula, the relevant one that involves a factor of sine squared and that is that the cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. So rewriting that we have that sine squared of theta is going to be 1 half 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta. So this is the key formula that we use to calculate an integral like this. The reason being that we're going to now be integrating 1, which is easy, and integrating a cosine and not a cosine squared. So, what we have rewriting our integrand is that i is the integral from 0 to l. We have a factor of a half, and the next line I'll take it outside of the integral sign. And then we have the integral of 1 minus the cosine of and then it's 2 times the initial argument of the sine function, so that's 2n pi x over l. Close brackets, integrate with respect to x. So this is going to be 1 half, and then I'll write a big square bracket for the results of our integral, remembering that this is a definite integral. So the integral of 1 is just x, and the integral of cosine is going to be sine, so we'll keep the minus sign there. we we'll write a sine here of the argument, 2n pi x all over l. And then when we integrate this, we have to divide by this coefficient, so that when we differentiate this, we get back to this. So in other words, we're going to have here L over 2n pi. Close brackets, and this is evaluated between naught and L. So again, just to be careful, if you differentiate this, you're going to replace the sine by cosine with its argument, and then you're going to multiply by the derivative of this with respect to x, and that's just going to be a factor of 2n pi that cancels that, and a factor of 1 over l that cancels that. So yes, we do get back to our starting line here, and we've calculated the integral correctly. So now we evaluate this just by substituting in our upper limit and then subtracting this evaluated at the lower limit. So we have a factor of a half, and then I'll open a big bracket still. So we put in first our upper limit, L minus L over 2n pi sine of, and now if x is L in here, the L and the L on the bottom will cancel, so we'll have sine of 2n pi. So that is our result for the integral evaluated at the upper limit. And now we subtract, I'll open a different bracket, the whole thing evaluated at the lower limit, and this is of course also multiplied by the half. So at the lower limit, the first term, x, is going to give us 0. And then we're going to subtract these constants multiplied by the sine of 0, and the sine of naught is naught so this will vanish. So it's naught minus naught, which is naught, and we'll close our 
big brackets. And at this stage we also recall that the sine of 2n pi is 0 because n is an integer. We were told that at the beginning. So for integer n this will also vanish. So this whole term vanishes and we're left with a half multiplying by L. So the result for the integral is L divided by 2. So I will just pause a moment and make a little bit of room. So since n is integer, sine of 2n pi vanishes. And this tells us that our integral is L divided by 2, and this is our final result for this integral. So the key things here were to realize that if you're integrating sine squared, the double angle formula is very useful, and that way we can rewrite it in a way which the integral is straightforward to carry out. And then we just recall finally that for integer values of n, sine of 2n pi, or sine of n pi indeed, is equal to 0. And that's our result.